Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is Stress and Chronic Pain Relief. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now in this recording, we're going to ask ourselves, or I'm going to ask myself and... You're going to ask yourself, if you choose to, of course, we're going to actually ask ourselves to relax. But we're not going to ask our whole body, we're just going to ask that one part of your body that is either uh, feels like it's containing stress, excessive stress or chronic pain. Now I realize you may have more than one part of your body that you could focus on, but we're just going to focus on one part uh, to start with because it tends to be a, a bit of a domino effect naturally occurs. Uh, it's very much like a crowd, you know, uh, one person starts doing something and it has an influence on the rest of the people. So if you've got, a, like in a comedy club, for example, you have you don't need everyone in the audience to find the comedian funny for most of the audience to laugh because laughter is contagious. So if you've got 10% of the audience laughing at the beginning of the stand-up routine. By the end of the routine, you probably have maybe 70% laughing because of the contagion of the laughter and people start opening their minds and thinking, well, they're laughing, they're finding it funny. And hearing other people laugh can cause you to laugh as well. Especially if I've seen it when one person has a really, really funny laugh and sets everyone else off, sometimes even the comedian. And it's it's a beautiful moment. It's lovely. But our bodies work in a similar way. I mean, it will, everything, every part of us is connected and affected by each other so from a positive perspective when one part of your body starts to feel more relaxed then those other parts of your body also start to feel more relaxed and part of that could be that unlike the earth which, you know, humans like to uh, carve out bits of land and say, this is my bit of land and this is the name of the country and you're not allowed in it and this is us, this is ours. The body doesn't do that. So there is no borders. There's no borders in your body. So yeah, you've got different parts. So you've got your knee and then you've got your thigh. But there's no borders between the two. And of course you've got your skin that covers both your thigh and your knee and it's all connected. Going all the way down to your shins and your feet. And that same piece of skin is also on your ears and on your back and your bum and your, your neck and your chest. It's one, you know, it's all connected. And it is the biggest organ that we have, is the skin. Which means that we really are connected together, all the different parts. So there's no borders. So when one part of your body, for example, if we just stay on the, the right knee for it, an example, the more relaxed your right knee becomes.
the other parts for example moving downwards towards your shins sideways towards maybe the backs of your legs uh, upwards towards your thighs and then inwards you know towards the through the muscles uh, into the bones you know you've got the blood vessels all those parts of your knee start to lose the um, start to lose the the sense of where the relaxation starts and whether or not it does end anywhere realizing that maybe it's just it's not just in the knee because of course the skin is also relaxed and when the skin covering your right knee feels relaxed then where does that end because there is no ending to the skin it just keeps going around your body covering your body there's not really a beginning and an ending to the skin it just there's a few openings of course but generally the skin just continues around the body so when you focus on your right knee and you notice that it's feeling calmer loose maybe heavy and light at the same time which is a, a bit of a weird kind of concept but it may be feel heavy so you you don't feel like you could really lift it but it's perhaps mainly because you don't want to you don't want to lift your knee you don't want to use it because it feels nice being relaxed but at the same time there's a real gentleness a lightness almost as if your knee could just float in the air so it's, I guess it's a bit of a contradiction but with the same understanding and experience of comfort and relaxation in that particular part of your body spreading in its own time to the different parts that maybe you weren't focusing on before so even if you just kept your focus on your right knee your thighs would become more relaxed your left knee in reaction to your right knee would also start to feel looser and then there's other parts of your body that may feel a connection to your knees like your elbows for example so your elbows may just start to relax and any part of your body with a joint that sort of moves like your fingers or your toes or your ankles your shoulders even your neck where you can move your head and your hips of course the tops of your hips so it's, it's a very domino effect but very gentle it's not a f not necessarily a fast moving source of relaxation it's not so much that you know you count down to three and then every single part of your body feels completely relaxed 
of course if you if you listen to me regularly you may find that just hearing my voice can actually uh, sort of set that movement that process of relaxation spreading through your body to just automatically proceed in its own time so that every part of you is relaxed and calm feeling comfortable in those parts of your body where maybe you used to feel discomfort or possibly even pain but that comfort and relaxation is more powerful than pain and it dissolves it It's very similar really to if you've got a bar full of hot water, I say full, maybe half full of hot water, and you just, you know, it's way too hot to get in, so you pour some cold water in. Now, unlike when you had the hot water, you could leave it for five minutes and come back in, you know, and not have to kind of watch it. But with the cold water being added, you need to be watching and checking because for it seems sometimes it seems to take ages for the water to cool down to the temperature that is suitable for you to actually get into the bath comfortably but once the water hits that temperature that's just right you have to turn the cold tap off very quickly because if it's left for much longer the water will be too cold to get into the bath and it's very difficult to heat that bath up with the hot water you'd think it'd be really easy to get that water back to being how you want it to be which just shows you the the power that cold water has much more of an impact than the hot water of course if you do it long enough you can get the water back but it takes some time and it almost feels like it's irreversibly cold. I know in the past I've had to actually empty out half of the bath in order to get the hot water on and to get it back to the temperature because I'd left the cold tap on for maybe a minute too long. So that, that's what relaxation does to stress and pain. That's what relaxation and comfort, uh, the effect it can have on uh, a physical discomfort of any kind in your body. As well as stress in your mind as well. That relaxation, relaxing your mind as well as your body so that perhaps before you ha had a lot of chatter going on maybe there was a lot of movement almost sometimes the mind can feel a little bit overcrowded a little bit too much maybe moving too fast But as that relaxation spreads from your body into your mind, your mind slows down. So you could say that the mind was where the hot water was, the physical part of your body, whichever part it may have been before, 
that was also some hot water and you've just poured some cool relaxing calm water through your system cooling those parts of your body and your mind because when you relax your body your mind automatically relaxes and when your mind feels relaxed your body automatically responds by relaxing even further and then your mind relaxes even more and so on so as you absorb these words these ideas of comfort relaxation knowing that everything I said is true you know this to be fact you know that when you relax a part of your body you can't always tell how far that relaxation is going and you're not always aware that maybe your back is feeling more relaxed than it was before because potentially you weren't taking any notice of it before but you can feel and notice a difference you may not be able to verbalize or even point out uh, or explain what that particular difference is but you know that you feel that something has changed because when your body and your mind feels more relaxed and you let go of stress and any physical discomforts that were there before you decided to listen to this recording you start to have a sense of well-being come over you you start to feel lighter in your mind your brain also feels relaxed as we all know the most important part of us is our brain the brain controls everything without us really needing to do anything at all and the mind feeling relaxed allows you to appreciate yourself to really appreciate being you and to feel gratitude towards the power of your mind the power of your brain and the power of your body to relax deeply is something that you can really enjoy and because you've got that deep connection between your mind your body and your brain if there's a part of your body that you wish to relax deeply you can just ask your brain to relax that part of your body 
and then just sit back and observe trusting your brain to do what you've asked because you know out of anyone you've ever met in your life out of anyone you ever will meet in the whole world your brain is the most trustworthy and the, th the thing that you rely on most in your whole lifetime when we get on a bus or a train or a plane we trust the pilot or the driver to keep us safe and to get us where we you know to where our destination is our brain does way more than anything that anybody has ever done for us and it does it every second of every day our brain if it wasn't for our brain we wouldn't be able to do anything we wouldn't even be here our brain helps us breathe our brain helps us heal our brain does everything all those natural processes within our body don't work without the brain the brain automatically runs everything which means we can trust your own brain completely and by having this contact with your brain it can almost be like an introduction to a form of self-hypnosis where you start to become accustomed to receiving what you ask for from your brain things like sleeping better you can ask your brain for all kinds of things one of those big things and most useful things is ask your brain for you to feel relaxed and completely comfortable in whatever part of your body you choose to focus on in other scenarios you could ask your brain to allow you to feel more confident ask that part of your brain responsible for your sleeping to allow you to sleep more deeply more easily ask that part of your brain responsible for healing to increase the healing to a part of your body list is endless and exciting are the possibilities that are available for you to experiment with but now we're just going to focus on asking your brain to relax completely. 
completely that part of your body that you've decided to focus on. So the any feelings that you were not enjoying, any feelings that felt you know discomfort of any kind, you can allow those to disappear and to be replaced with a sense of complete comfort, looseness and safety. Feeling so safe because you're in good hands. Your brain is here to protect you. It's also worth remembering that sometimes your brain will, you know, give you certain sensations in order to protect you. And you can talk to your brain. For example, if you've got an injured or maybe you've got a chronic pain in, in your hand, for example. Now, if you know the cause of that discomfort and you know that you need to be careful with it and the healing process is gone, has happened and it's no longer acute pain, it's no longer an injury, but you've got this discomfort and you don't really feel that you need it anymore as a warning that's what pain is it's just a warning to let us know that there's something wrong we need to address that issue whether going to a doctor the hospital or even in the case of an injury just being careful with it for the time it takes for it to heal Now, if the healing's already occurred and there's still discomfort there, that's when it's called chronic pain. And you don't need that. It's not necessary. And when you let your brain know that you're grateful for everything that it does for you, including allowing you to have pain to keep you safe in order to prevent further harm to that part of your body. However, when you let your brain know that you don't need that physical discomfort anymore, because the warning is no longer necessary. You are safe and you're keeping that part of your body safe. You don't need that warning. So you can ask your brain or you can say to your brain, thank you for all that you do. But please remove that pain now. I don't need it anymore. I don't need that discomfort anymore. And please allow that part of my body to be filled with comfort and relaxation. And you can make a promise to your brain that you will take care of that part of your body. You look after it, you'll take care of it. You'll take responsibility. So that you can 
from now on enjoy feeling relaxed and comfortable in that particular part of your body. Now, So this brings us to the end of this recording. So I'm going to count down from 10 down to 1. If you choose, you can allow yourself to feel even more deeply relaxed. Even more comfortable and calm ten